an Elders Explorer 504, just going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. In front of the van you've got your jockey wheel, hitch and handbrake, we'll demonstrate these to you in person here on site. In the front locker you have two gas bottle tie downs and your gas regulator on the bulkhead. They are very simply there to, uh, the, sorry, the gas regulator is very simply there to allow the gas to be regulated. We do have the gas pipe work available should you need it. It is £15 a pipe and it goes direct from the regulator to the propane gas bottle. Like I said, you've got your two gas bottles tied down so you can hold a maximum of two six kilogram propane gas bottles. On the side of the van, you've got your wind down legs to stabilize the caravan while it's in use. You'll just put them down so they touch the ground, and then you do uh, not need to lift the caravan with these, it could potentially damage the floor of the van. Then you've got your heating and hot water flue, very simply there to allow the, heat, the heating system to breathe when it's running on gas. You've then got your water pickup pipe, connects directly into the side of the caravan and into the act roll itself. So the pickup pipe itself drops inside the act roll, as I said, and we'll demonstrate how to fill the water system once we go inside the van. You've then got your two fridge vents, two fridge vents are very simply there to allow the fridge system to breathe. You've got your gas flue on the top right hand side, and then the two vent covers are just there to allow the heat out of the back of the fridge and to take some cool air in. Motor mover, we're going to demonstrate to you in person here on site, show you how that works, and then we'll talk the units to the correct setting so you can see they've been tightened correctly. The fresh water that goes in the front of the caravan has to come out somewhere, and you've got these two vents caps down the side here, as you can see, got the water running, there's some water in them, but that bit can't work at the moment. Um, so one of these will connect to the sinks, and one of these will connect to the shower on board the van. Then got your toilet flush tank. This will take three and a half litres of water and a capful of the pink fluid prior to use. In the bottom, you have your toilet waste set. You plug the green handle at the bottom and pull the set towards you. And on top of that set, there'll be a uh, green button to press in or an orange button to press in to tip the waste away. And on the front of the um, tank, you'll have a neck that turns out so you can tip the waste away through that neck. And the cap is a measure for your pink and your blue fluid. You will need to put one litre of water in that set and a cap full of the blue fluid prior to use. On the back, you have your two wind down legs to stabilise the caravan while it is in use. You've got your mains power lead going into the side of the van from the power on site, and then you've got we've put a laser battery on here just to demonstrate how everything works. That battery will come off before the caravan is taken, as the caravans do not come supplied with a battery. Going on to the inside of the caravan now, we're going to show you how the inside works. So to the left hand side of the door as you walk into the caravan, as you walk into the door on the left hand side, as I said, you've got your uh, master power switch, your internal lighting, your water pump and your awning light. And at the top here you've got your 12 volt power for the battery on board the caravan. That'll tell you how much power is on the battery on board. Like I said, the battery on this van will be coming up before the caravan leaves site. If you do need a new one, we do have new ones available here also. First thing you need to do is once the power is turned on, you have your water pump turned off on the control panel. You're going to come underneath the seat on the front right hand side of the van. And underneath this front seat on the right hand side, you're going to see this yellow valve right down in the front corner. That yellow valve needs to be flat with the floor for the water system to fill. And if you want to drain the water system, it needs to be pointing upright towards the bottom of the seat. So as you see it now, flat with the floor is how you would fill this water system up to start with. And you would leave it like that until you've finished your holiday. Once, you once you're ready to leave your holiday, you can lift that switch up and that will allow all the water on board the system to drain out. You then come over to every tap on board the caravan, open them all up on the hot side of the water system. As you can see, I've already done that on this particular van, so all the water system is filled up. We're then going to come over to our water pump switch and turn the water pump on. Once the water system is completely full and all the air is out of the system, so it stops spitting and splattering, you can turn all of the taps back off and at that point you can start thinking about warming the water on board the van. So on this particular van, you've got two different ways of warming the water. You've got gas on this side and electric on the right hand side. To ignite the water heater on gas, you'll put the switch down and if it ignites on gas, you'll have a green light on this side. And if it fails to ignite, you'll have a red light on this side. 
It is a preset temperature on the gas and electric. However, you would need to use the gas, even if you're on an electric site, to boost the water system while you're showering on board the caravan. If you want to turn off the gas supply, you can flick the switch back into the up position and it will isolate the, the gas to the water heater. The switch on the left hand side here is your electric water heating. So you've either got 500 watts of electric on this right hand side or a thousand watts of electric and it will depend on what caravan site you're on to what you set this to when you are on your holiday so here on site for instance we can run a maximum of 500 watts so i've got the water heater turned on 500 watts and it will slowly warm up if it's on a thousand watts it'll be a little bit more efficient and it'll warm up that little bit quicker the dial on the left hand side here at the bottom that says space heater is for your heating on board the caravan now you've got three different ways again of setting this electric power wise so you've got 500 watts, 1,000 watts, or 2,000 watts. Now, it will depend on what caravan site you're on again to what you set this to. And if you ask the site office when you arrive on your holiday, they will advise you of what you can set this to so it works the most efficiently. Once you've selected your power source on the side here, whether it be 1, 2, or 3, or 500, 1,000, or 2,000, you can then control the temperature of the heater on this dial on the right-hand side. The thicker the line is, the hotter the heating will be. If you want to run the blown air fans on board the caravan, you can select the 12 volt fans just here. And again, you'll be able to control the room temperature on this dial on the right hand side. If you want to run your heating on gas, you can spin the dial to the gas option at the bottom. It will self ignite on gas as long as the gas is turned on and connected. And again on here, you have a green light if it ignites on gas and a red light if it fails to ignite on gas. To isolate the gas supply to the heater you'll put it back to this zero position just here. On gas again you use the control on the right hand side to control the temperature inside of the caravan. Next up I'm going to take you over to the fridge. Now the fridge is very simple to use. You've got power on on this button on the left hand side. You've got 240 mains, there's no option here. And you can use the fridge temperature button on the right hand side to control the temperature of the fridge. You've then got your option to run gas. So the fridge will self ignite on gas if you have a gas bottle connected. So you'd select the gas option. If it failed to ignite on gas, it'd flash the red warning light on this right hand side. And it would also flash the, symbol, uh, the flame symbol just here. It'd also beep at you to let you know it has indeed failed to ignite. If it does ignite on gas, and you can use the, th the thermometer button again on the right hand side to control the temperature of the fridge. The higher you go again, the colder the fridge will be. 12 volt mode. So as you can see, it's now indicated to me there's no 12 volt power source coming to the fridge. That's because we have no car connected at the front of the caravan to tow the caravan down the road with. If you're connected to the car and you have the right connection on the car, the fridge would actually work as a cool box. You do not need to have the control panel turned on inside the door just up there. That can be turned off. You can just come inside, turn the fridge on, and hit the 12 volt mode. Like I said then, that'll keep, keep the beer and wine nice and cold and maybe even the butter, I suppose that's important, um, while you're towing down the road. Hob, cooker and grill all work very much the same as your household appliances. You've got your igniter on the front here and your, and your gas rings on top. The bed lifts up so you can access the storage uh, from the inside underneath there. And then coming down into the bathroom, the last thing we're going to go through is the toilet system itself. On top of the toilet, you have an electric flush to flush your toilet with. You have a toilet full indicator light here on the left hand side of the toilet at the top, which illuminates red when the toilet waste cassette is full. The toilet seat itself turns for your convenience, as you can see. However, when you're removing the toilet waste cassette from underneath the caravan, you do need to make sure this toilet seat is in the straight on position with the back of the toilet as if it is turned at all, it will actually stop you from removing that cassette. Below the toilet, you have your gray waste handle. The gray waste handle needs to be in the open position when you're using the toilet, so the waste goes into the cassette, and it needs to be in the closed position when you're not using the toilet. You'll also put this back in the central position so it stops any smells coming up inside the van. However, when this is in the central position, you will be able to remove the toilet waste cassette. If you try to remove the toilet waste cassette with this bin closed, or open, sorry, it could potentially damage the toilet waste cassette itself. 
So this is the Eldis Explore 504. If you have any further questions on the caravan, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the Caravan Company and we'll be more than happy to help. We appreciate your business and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon. Thank you for now. Bye-bye.